Figuring out how to balance your insulin every day is a puzzle. It's like a math problem, a science experiment, and a how well do you know yourself quiz all in one. But whether you're newly diagnosed or you're reevaluating your daily routine, it's good to start with basal insulin or long acting insulin. It's a staple in type 1 diabetes management. Basal insulin helps you gently steer your blood sugar levels, letting glucose into your cells as you need it throughout the day. Without any basal insulin, it's like you're driving a car without any brakes. You might speed out of control. Biologically, your liver will keep pumping out glucose, but nothing's around to let that glucose into your cells. So your blood sugar levels can skyrocket dangerously, leading to even more severe hyperglycemia, also known as high blood sugar, or even diabetic ketoacidosis, a high blood sugar condition that I'll talk about more in an upcoming video. Too much basal insulin can be dangerous as well. After all, you don't want to be constantly slamming on the brakes of your car either. With too much basal insulin floating around, your cells will absorb too much glucose and there won't be enough left in your bloodstream to fuel important things like your brain, which could get you into hypoglycemia territory. So, to find that safely driving in your car zone, you can adjust your basal insulin a little bit at a time. If you're feeling good about how you're managing type 1, and your blood glucose levels are pretty stable throughout the day and night, it's perfectly fine to stay where you are. But if you feel like your blood glucose levels creep up and down too much for comfort right now, it can be helpful to start with a simple basal level calculation. Around 0.3 units of basal insulin per kilogram of your body weight per day. This might not feel like enough, but remember, you need to leave room for your bolus insulin when you eat. More on that in the next video. Sticking with basal insulin for now, if you're taking injections, one thing to consider is when to take your daily dose or doses to set you up for a smooth 24-hour journey. This smooth journey is especially important overnight when you can't check your blood sugar or adjust because you're asleep. So the risk of a low can be a problem. The first thing to ask yourself is, when will you remember to take your basal insulin? It might be easiest to add it into a consistent time in your daily routine. So if your bedtime is all over the place, it's not a great idea to use that as a benchmark for your basal dose. But if you walk your dog at 8 a.m. every day, that might be a reliable, easy reminder for your injection. Certain kinds of basal insulin may require a specific routine because the chemicals are just different. For example, Lantus and Levermere are types of basal insulin that sometimes need to be taken twice per day instead of once. It's all part of your unique journey. To make adjustments to your basal dose, it's helpful to compare your blood glucose when you go to bed and when you wake up. If, in the morning, you're more than 3 millimoles higher than the night before, you'll want to increase your daily basal insulin by around 5-10%. to 10%. Remember to check again in a couple days to see if you need to adjust some more. On the other hand, if you're more than 3 millimoles lower than the night before, you'll want to decrease your daily insulin by around 5-10% to and do the same sort of check-in in a couple days later. And if you're using a pump rather than injections, you're probably working with around 3 different basal insulin rates. For example, most people will need a lower rate when they go to bed but a higher rate for a few hours before they wake up. Now, if all these calculations sound a little overwhelming, thankfully, you're not on this journey alone. Your diabetes care team is always there to help, as are research-based trusted resources like this video series. Here are three key takeaways from this episode. Number one, the average adult with type 1 diabetes needs 0.3 units of long-acting basal insulin per kilogram of body weight per day, though needs vary from person to person. Number two, take your daily dose or doses of basal insulin at a time of day that works for your routine and the type of basal insulin you're taking. And three, when adjusting your basal insulin dose, do it gradually. Try increasing or decreasing your dose by five to 10% and then reevaluating in two to three days before making any additional changes. I understand that this episode was a little math heavy, so for further information, please just click the link below. 